position the jack on the vehicle, you've got to be careful where you place it. The last thing you want to do is just shove this under the, the body, especially with a unibody, and start jacking along the edge, because you'll push it right through the rocker panel, because it's not designed to hold the weight of the vehicle. On most vehicles, you'll have a reinforced area at the front, just behind the front fender, and you'll have one just in front of the rear fender. You have to look underneath there, and you'll see where there's a little raised bracket or a, re a recessed portion. You may find a little mark actually on the rocker panel with a little arrow that indicates where the jacking point is. If you have a full frame vehicle, such as a full size pickup truck, then you won't end up jacking it up by the unibody portion here. You'll actually slide this under and put it underneath the frame. So what I'm gonna do is take a look here, and I can see that I've got a recessed portion. That's the indicator where this portion of the jack has to go and jack the vehicle up. Now I don't have to get the, the vehicle up four or five feet in the air. I just want to be able to get the tire off the ground. Once I've got it in that position, I'm going to have to roll the tire around. And right now, with it being in park, or if I put it in drive, it only moves a couple inches on either side. So what I have to do is I have to put the car into neutral. Again, that's why I've engaged the emergency brake. And I will have to turn the car, the ignition, into the on position. The vehicle is now in neutral. Now my, my tire will turn freely for me. So what I will do is decide where I want to make my starting point. And I can see the brand name is up here, that it's a Continental. We'll have the name of the tire. We'll have the model of the tire and other information around here. So I've already got my overall photo. I then bring my camera closer. I will adjust the height of my camera so that the front of the lens is squared up with this portion. The majority of my tire is running sideways. So what I want to do is get my camera shooting straight on as opposed to, so this would be a landscape as, a, as opposed to a portrait. And I'm going to photograph from about here to here. You have to decide what type of lighting you want. If the ambient light lets you see all the information, when I'm talking information, where it says the tire, the size, anything that's written on the side of it, if you can use ambient light, that's fine. If not, you may have to use side lighting with your flash to create a little bit of a shadow. So you may want to have the flash high, maybe low or off to the side. So you have to decide what looks good for you. I would photograph about a quarter of this, maybe a little bit more. Then my next photo, I'll rotate this clockwise. I will take a photo of this section. When I start looking at this section, I can see the size of the tire. This one happens to be a 225 slash 55 R17. That's a 17 inch tire. I'll photograph that. I will then rotate another quarter of a turn and then one more. So now we can see all of the markings that are on here. Besides the size of the tire, there's gonna be traction indicators, wear indicators on how long this tire is gonna last. They actually stamp a date code in there whenever the tire is manufactured. They, they mark it with the week and the year. So if you see the number 4711, like on this tire, that was made in the 47th week of 2011. So you can actually figure out what year the tire was, that it's an old tire or a new tire.